Bral is an environmental NGO in, uh, in Brussels, uh, our baseline citizen action Brussels. And what I'm going to talk about is a bit uh, how to engage as a citizen in air quality. I'm going to talk through uh, different experiences that we had in what we call citizen science. Uh, because we believe that uh, citizen science is an element of uh, policy making of uh, an engagement of citizens in, in towards cleaner air policies for all of Brussels. Our first experience that we had with, uh, with what we at that time already thought was citizen science was the expert project in which we engaged with uh, Brussels Environnement, Les Vieux Brussels, where they had like these uh, small italometers. which measure black carbon, and they, uh, they, they, well, we were in contact with them to engage citizens in this uh, project. So what I wanted was to have citizens walk around with these devices to measure exposure to black carbon. It's uh, important to also make the difference between exposure and air, amb ambient air quality. So the black carbon device is something that measures your exposure and is very related to the source of, uh, of pollution. So it's, uh, it's best to measure that at, uh, at street level by citizens walking around with it. Um, our goal in this project was, okay, we, uh, uh, Brussels Environnement wants to have data, but they needed citizens, they needed participants to uh, carry around these, these devices. So we as Braal Vitaud is a good opportunity for citizens to get in touch with science, to get in touch with how knowledge on air quality is produced and so on. But during the process, we understood that was, this is not really citizen science. This is scientific crowdsourcing, a bit as uh, the, the schedule that was showed by, uh, by Karina. Uh, the volunteers or the, the citizens were asked to walk around with a device which was owned by the government, by the, the administration. Uh, the data that were produced by this device went to the, to the administration. The graphs, the, the results that came out, were produced completely by the administration. The questions that were asked were completely uh, produced by the, the administration. All this has its validity. I'm not saying that this is not valid, but we thought we, need, uh, we needed something more. So what did this device do? Well, it measured black carbon, which is in Brussels very much related to uh, uh, the, the the diesel cars in, the, in, the, in traffic. And so by walking around with this device, you could see, and your personal exposure, you see it in the, in, the, in the back, and you have here a typical graph of someone exposed to black carbon uh, who is working. So you see in the morning when he gets to work, he has a high exposure because that's the, the moment of time he, is in, he or she is in, in, uh, outside in traffic. Then all day through work, at work, you are not exposed or not much exposed because certainly if you work in a building with, uh, with good filter filtration, good air conditioning and so on, then the, the, you don't have a problem. And then at night, uh, you, when you go home, you expose yourself once more. Um, but this kind of mobile data also allow to, do, to create maps of this exposure in Brussels. And so that is what uh, Brussels Environnement took out of it. They, they collected all this data gathered by all these individuals working, uh, walking around in the city, and they produced this expert map of Brussels of the black carbon exposure of, uh, of uh, people in Brussels. Now, how did they produce this map? They uh, used the measurements, which they combined with the source of the emission being traffic. So it's a, a kind of a modelization. But as I said, uh, while this, this exercise is very valid and it produces very good knowledge on, uh, on the, the problem of air quality in Brussels, it is not something that is really in control of citizens. It's not really in, uh, in the hands of the citizens to define what you are going to do with this data, how are we going to treat this data, what kind of questions are we going to treat with this data. For example, uh, uh, Brussels Environnement very much focused on the map and they did not focus a lot on the experience on the, on the graphs. 
for example, comparing the different experience of different users in the, in the city, because this is a typical graph of someone who is working. But we saw other graphs, people that were poor, that lived in the city center, who exposed themselves all of the time because they were not, they did not have the opportunity to, uh, to, to, to work in an, in an office that was clean and, and so on. So comparing this kind of uh, data is something that is not being done for the moment, whereas uh, a lot of the, uh, the people with whom we worked had quite some different questions, some questions about that. And so one of uh, our participants, well, he opened the eyes to us because he said we, we need something that's more participatory. We need something that can be, uh, that, that is accessible to everyone, that shows direct data, that shows direct feedback uh, to the users, and so on. Uh, because if we can, well, Bristol Environment, they had eight devices of these, because they are very expensive. Uh, we need something that we can have more and more devices, just like what Influencer is doing, just like what, uh, uh, what uh, the hacker is doing, trying to have a lot of sensors because the number of data can also produce quality. So we said we need something that we go uh, a bit more towards citizen science in which citizens can really take into hand the the whole framework, the, the research question, the things they want to, uh, the things we want to know, uh, the, 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 do we want to know something about air quality in general? Do we want to know something about our exposure? Do we want to know if we can have something in hand by changing our routes? Uh, can, we, can we explore which routes towards a work, for example, are cleaner than others, and so on? Why? Because we believe that citizen science is part of uh, policy making in Brussels. If you do coll collective knowledge production, we can get to collective awareness, and by raising collective awareness, we can push policy makers towards other policies. Uh, this, we think uh, true research, research is a lot uh, at the moment still at the level of the city, and as an individual we have a lot of questions about that. But we can also gather these questions into a community and get the uh, answers which are not only at the individual level, but answers which are also uh, comparing our individual exposure, our individual ex uh, experience with others, by and by doing that, creating collective knowledge about air, air quality and about what is my exposure, what is the exposure of my neighbor, and as, as such, gathering new questions, new insights, and new uh, pushing uh, governments towards uh, action and towards political measures. Um, we organized then, because we want to, to do something about it, we, we organized a, an event which was a smart citizen air quality meter. Because we want to know, well, is there, is there a possibility to do this, uh, this trade-off? Uh, the, the expensive devices of uh, of the, the administration, the, 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 the real scientific devices, as they are called, expensive uh, in hands of the administration, and at the other side, the sensors, which were, uh, were said by a lot of uh, scientists, but other, also other uh, well, people from the administration that were not valid at all. And so we want to see, can we do something about this trade-off between uh, participatory value and uh, the devices are very access accessible, and the need for scientific rigor, which is uh, asked by our governments. Um, and we saw, well, at that point, we concluded the, the middle ground was not really uh, was not really there in terms of uh, uh, that that was accepted by all that, and the citizens would accept that is really participatory, and the governments would accept that is really valid. But the, the, the technology was developing, and it was, it was time to give this technology and to, to, to give the awareness also by the administrations a push to say that, well, there's something developing, and we can do something about it. Um, the, the device that we found and the, the organization that we found that, uh, that, that, uh, that was mostly covering this middle ground for us was the Airbeam made by air casting. Uh, why did we go for this device? Well, because we are not technological, we are not uh, civic lab, we don't have this, uh, 
uh, capacity to build our sensors ourselves, but also because the, this, the organization who developed this in, uh, in New York, Aircasting, Habitat Map, they were very much in the same line as us. They thought we need an emancipatory device where people can measure themselves. Uh, it was also completely funded by NGOs. It was about open data, open source software, direct feedback to the, to the, to the users, and so on. So that's why we choose this device. We are still talking exposure, and so the first thing you, that we, well, the, the, the people, we, the individuals, the groups with which, whom we work, uh, the first feature that you have with this device is measure your in individual experience. A bit the same as with black carbon, where you have this kind of graphs, what is happening to me, to me with air quality throughout the day, but you have the direct feedback from the device because it's connected to your mobile phone, and so you see immediately how the, your air quality is uh, at that point. You can also put it on, the, on a map and you see, for example, ex the effect of a park where you bike, bike through. You can, see, you can put it on the graph, and this was a very nice graph because this was actually the day before the pollution peak. So uh, individual users, they saw the pollution peak coming. They said, oh, it's, it's raising, it's raising with me. What is, what is happening? And so one of the strengths of this is that you know for yourself uh, that, that that, that this pollution peak might be coming, but also if you want to do something about it, uh, the, 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 the call from the government about the pollution peak came the next day, whereas if we already see the day before and a lot of people have this device, we can also already st uh, start doing something about it. We can, we can say, okay, we see it's raising, maybe we, we, we need to, I didn't, do not take, need to take the car today because I will then also contribute to this. Or if you have asthma, uh, you can say, okay, maybe this day I have to be a bit more careful, I can stay in, uh, and so on. But for us, uh, even more important is building collective knowledge. Um, bringing all these experiences together, all these individual experiences together, and that creates on this, the, the, the website of Aircasting, creates a crowd map in which you can see all the traces uh, of people measuring. And so you build a map, but you most of all, and what is most useful of these kind of uh, tools, is to talk about exposure. When are we exposed more? And for example, uh, putting graphs together of uh, what people thought were quicker or cleaner routes to the city. And so, for example, a learning there was that there was not much difference between what people thought was quick and what people thought was clean. So this kind of things, uh, bringing all these experiences together creates collective knowledge about air quality and about our, our exposure to air quality, to wet air. And so what we think with this device is that you can really become a citizen scientist. And this is also an appeal to everyone here because, uh, we, well, we have a lot of people that gathering data, but you, you, you need to do something with the data. And so what we propose to our volunteers is to, uh, when you re register a session, you can put tags to the session. And so, for example, uh, people can put the tag tram, the, the tag metro, the tag uh, on foot, the, the tag bike, and so on. And so you can start comparing. When are you mo more exposed? Are you more exposed when you use the metro? What is the difference between using a car or using a, a bike? And so on. So this kind of... Questions can, uh, can be start, uh, treated by the, the data that we, we have gathered with a lot of volunteers for the moment in uh, all over Brussels. And so um, we see we are now at a point that we have a lot of data gathering. We start to do some first analysis, but we are not very experienced in that. So it's also an open call for everyone who has knowledge about how to produce anal analysis out of it, how to use these tags but also other people that might have questions like say, oh, I'm interested in this and propose to our community to say, hey, can you not use this tag? For example, uh, I want to have a tag jogging in the park and that a lot of people who have a device can start tagging their, their, their sessions with this kind of uh, 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 with jogging or park or so on and that we can start uh, analyzing this kind of, uh, of, uh, of questions. So it's in the process that we're doing, it's really we, we want to have the question, the research question, the, the kind of things that we want to get out, 
to the, the, the citizens, to the people that work with us, to the people that, that use this device, and but also crowdsource this completely. Uh, we have a Facebook page on which we, uh, for the moment, it's mostly in between the groups, but we, we, which is open to everyone to also ask questions, hey, to the, the people who have this device, I have a, a, a research question which I'm, I'm playing with, and so on. So, coming back to why do we do this? Because uh, it's not just about technology, it's just not just about knowing, but it's about changing policies. And so, uh, we believe that citizen science can co-produce knowledge and, and uh, feed democratic debate and de democratic action. People who measure, they know, they start to know, them, but they also want to let know, what have I measured? Not only the analysis, the, 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 the scientific data and so on, but also the storytelling, the individual experiences, like the, 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 the guy that uh, crossed the park and saw his, uh, his, uh, the, the PM drop. This is a, this is a story, this is, is this scientific data. Well, it's only one sample, but it is a story and it shows something and, it, and science can, can uh, well, builds on a lot of individual data and individual points and so bringing this all together uh, advances the scientific knowledge but also advances the knowledge within society. But most importantly, we also think that bringing this science and uh, citizens together, we can uh, influence air policy in Brussels and we want we really want to come to co-construction of air policies in Brussels in which academia and citizens work together uh, not uh, to, to 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 have better air policies for to, to guarantee or uh, right to clean air in Brussels we see for the moment that we and a lot of citizens but also we we have uh, sometimes the feeling that there's an iron coalition between academia and policy making and that we as citizens, we are a bit out of it. And so by becoming scientists ourselves, by engaging with the academic, ac ac academic debate and by ex exchanging with them, starting to understand how uh, academia work, but, but works, but also by uh, getting citizens uh, as, as a self uh, get our research questions on the, 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 the scientific agenda. Uh, we, we believe that we can, uh, instead of having this uh, uh, iron uh, uh, engagement between the academia and policymaker, that we can make it into really a triangle in which uh, that works for society and to, to towards co-construction of uh, air policy in Brussels. So, this is my final slide, and this, this sums it up. There was an article in the Standard of, uh, about our project this, uh, this week, and I think that the title says it all. Who measures uh, air pollution or fine dust, he has influ influence. And so this is uh, why, we, why we do it. Any questions or research questions? Of course. I wondered, um, I... I hear that there is a link uh, between the Hacker uh, project and the data that, that will be collected uh, by uh, Influence Air and uh, the, da the data of the Airbeam. Could you explain us a bit more about that? Is there uh, already a plan? How will the data be integrated? And what is the, the synergy um, between the different types of data? Um, so, well, just a general question with respect to that. Um, I don't think for the moment that has really a plan to, to, to integrate. What we, as, as Bra, what we dream of, and I think it's also a bit the ambition of the Hack Air project, but also uh, uh, the, 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 the air casting project, they have possibilities to integrate uh, on the platform different uh, measurements from different sensors, from different data sources, and so on. And so what we, as Bra, dream of to, is to have, like, uh, a platform page in which we gather all kind of data that are available for, for Brussels. It does not need to be on the same layer, on the same geographical layer, because there's a lot of difference between, for example, the exposure data and uh, data from, uh, from stationary uh, sensors. 
because it's a different kind of uh, measurement, it's a different kind of an analysis that you would do, but having this kind of bringing them all together in one platform and uh, that you can say, okay, I want to know something about mobile data, that you, you have a layer, you want to know something about stationary data, that you have a layer, that will be for us really a, a step forward. Thank you, because I, I, I understood that they also gather mobile data Mm -hmm. With one device, so maybe there's a yeah. possibility to do some normalization based on yeah. more detailed uh, observations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, and maybe and this also was the, 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 the question before. There's a, there's a big difference between mobile data and, uh, and, and, and stationary data. And I think with the, the, the advantage of mobile data is that you can uh, you talk about exposure, and you can really talk about experiences. You can compare. Uh, using different modes of transportation. You can compare uh, different uh, times of day where you pass, but it is about your, uh, your personal experience and, and, and getting, uh, it's not very useful to really go into a, a, a geographical debate about air quality. Mm -hmm. It might be that in some streets, for example, you can say, well, if I walk through the street, uh, of most people that walk through the street are more exposed then people walking through, an, through another street. There's, there's a geography in it, but you, you need to be sure to, to know that you're talking about exposure uh, and not about the air in this street is polluted because the, the, the experience can be very different if, if you bike through uh, Rue de Tron and you are stuck behind the bus, you have a different experience than the one that goes at another time of day and he can, and he, and he can uh, bike the street completely fluently. So you, this is uh, another way of uh, thinking about air quality data and about uh, analyzing them. Okay, Fine. thank you for... Uh... Hello. Um, you spoke twice about an iron coalition between uh, authorities and academia. Could you develop a little bit on that? What, what it does mean? Well, the, the thing is that the knowledge production for the moment is a lot within the administration it's a lot within uh, academia and so there's the, the well academia they have their own independence still they, they mm -hmm. have their own funds and so on so they, so they can develop their own but a lot of academia is also uh, subsidized by the state and so the state poses the research question ideally via democracy via our elections we influence what kind of questions that the state asks towards academia but by citizen science, by this kind of stuff, we can do this more directly because we uh, put new questions, for example, about exposure on the, on the political agenda. A lot of, the, of air quality and all, all the legal framework is based on, the, on ambient air quality. So all the, the norms, about the European norm, World Health Organization norms, they are all based on, on uh, ambient air quality because this, this is the debate in academia, how to measure ambient air quality, how to have a geographical spread of... Uh, and so there is some research on, on, on exposure, but it's not really uh, taken into account in the whole legal, uh, legal debate. And so by bringing this question about uh, our exposure, what we, um, our statement is always, always no one lives in a, in a measuring station. Mm -hmm. so, if the, the, the mean over Brussels is, correct, is, is, is good, but you, are, you happen to live in a street where you have a uh, street canyon, well, you have no message with this mean in Brussels. If, you, uh, if in general you live somewhere in the out outskirts of Brussels and you will have the feeling that you have a good uh, air quality because you live in the green, but in fact you, you, you spend every day one hour in traffic uh, exposing yourself to, uh, to bad air quality, then it might be that you are more exposed, that you have more bad air than, uh, than, than someone living in the, in the city centre. So bringing new questions into the, into the debate and uh, uh, trying as citizens to, by measuring ourselves, by, uh, by doing little ana analysis ourselves, by storytelling, by pushing governments to ask new questions to academia, but also pushing academia to bring to into account the questions that we as citizens have. This is something that, uh, I, that for us is, is, the, is the most important aspect of citizen science. And can you say that at the moment there are already big differences, significant differences between the authority 
measurements and the citizen ones? You mean in uh, in the in the results? Yes, in the results about the air quality. Well, uh, that, that's one of the things that I always find a bit ironic. That most of the time we our measurements are more or less in line with what with, with that, what they show. So there's a lot of uh, uh, fear about uh, certainly I think less from academia, but more from policy policy kind of view because they think in a legalist kind of way about this. So they have a lot of fear about what this census can show, but most of the time it shows that, uh, that well, they should, that there's, there's, there's not that much discrepancy between, between both. And sometimes uh, I think uh, there was a debate in Influence Air last, in, last night also. The, the, the sensors, the civic data are first to really see that the pollution peak is coming. And so I think this is, this is a good thing and we we don't well we need we don't always need to frame it in the legalist debate, but mm -hmm. about just uh, knowing as citizens and getting the, the 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 right policies about air quality. It's not only a, a legal question; it's just also a democratic question. Okay, thank you. I'm not sure whether this question is for you, mm -hmm. but I wonder if somebody is going to give an overview of air quality. What are the different kinds of particle, different kinds of gases, the relative importance, um, so that we have some kind of context as to whose sensor is me measuring what? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, for the moment, and uh, I think, the, but I think the, the others can also say something about it. Most uh, people are me measuring PM because in sensor-wise this is very accessible, but uh, there's a lot of pollutants uh, around and, uh, and everyone, every pollutant has its own uh, uh, behavior, it has its own consequences for health and so on. So that's also something that we think that needs to be, uh, this knowledge in society needs to be broadened. And so it's, uh, well, you can find this kind of uh, things on, for example, the website of uh, of Irselin, of the different uh, the, the organizations of administrations measuring air quality about the pollutants, about their effects, but it's not very accessible. So we need more accessible data for everyone, and I, I agree there with what you say. You need to, people need to know what is the uh, the difference between NO2, between PM, and what's the, the, the and how they interact, and so on, and so. Well, for, for example, about ozone, in summer we have, well, that's something that's now very common and people know about ozone because it's on, on, uh, on uh, the weather forecast that they talk about this. And so people start to know what, what is ozone and what, when does it occur, occur and so on. And so we need the same kind of uh, accessible knowledge and uh, spreading of information about all the other pollutants. P PM is a particle. Yeah, PM um, is fine dust. So I, re I remember when there was, well, there's an ongoing debate in China about levels of pollution in cities. And I seem to remember that the American embassy was distributing a set of statistics that was different from the one that the Chinese were providing. That's no surprise. Um, but the particular difference was the particle size that they were measuring. Mm -hmm. um, and they argued that the particles that they were measuring were of a size that was far more relevant to human health than that which the, uh, the Chinese authorities uh, mm -hmm. were, were, yeah. were offering. For the moment, but they, you really need to talk to the specialist about uh, the, but the, the, the size that is taken by the World Health Organization as uh, the indication for health issues is PM2.5. So the one that influence air is measuring, the one that uh, the air beams are measuring, and so on. So I'm not, I'm not familiar with the case of Sarna, so, but it might be that indeed I measured PM10, which also has uh, health issues, but other health issues than PM2.5. The American Embassy measures two, PM2.5. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks.